to welcome everyone with our 4-H Ag and Hort Afternoon Adventures. Great to see all of those of you joining with us today. We're still about oh, 30 seconds before we get started. I might even wait a little bit longer just in case people are having troubles clicking in. Sometimes technology isn't always our friend and provides some hiccups when people are joining. So we'll give them a second. But as we're waiting, I will kind of share this with all of you. Those of you that have been with us since September, um, I don't know if you remember, but in September I had cut apart a sweet potato and I've been growing it since then. And so just to give you a little update of how my plant is doing, um, I'll start the vine here and I should almost have a measurement tape going along with my vine. But if anyone wants to guess in the chat how many inches this longest vine is, um, you can put that in the chat. But this is my sweet potato. And there is the root structure that's still growing in my jar of water. So you can see I've got another big sprout coming off the top here. And our friend that's going to be on with us later today is going to help me maybe transplant some of this into some soil. So maybe the next time you join, uh, you'll get another update maybe of two plants, one that's still growing in water and one that we've transplanted in some soil. So. Um, any guesses in the chat of how long my sprout is growing there, Becca or Nick? Um, there's one guess for 31 inches. Oh, that's close. You must have been measuring or at least had a, 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 a tape measure out with that. Any other guesses? One yard. I'll show it one more time here. Just uh, So here's the tip, toppy, tippy of the plant. And then we'll grow... And it's not a beanstalk. This is not, not a beanstalk. This is a sweet potato. Another other guess guesses? 35 inches, 45 inches. Wow, some very close guesses. Very good. I, what was that last one, Becca? 28. 28. Well, those of you in that 30 range, it is 32 inches right now. Um, you were very close. There's some 31s, some, some 30, some other 30s in there. So great guesses. Maybe next time we should have a jar of, of beans you can count. See how many <laughs> beans you're so good at guessing. Um, but again, uh, I think we're ready to get started. We're two minutes after four. We've got a lot to cover today on our Ag and Hort Afternoon Adventures. We're glad that you're with us today. Um, our theme for today and for the rest of the month is indoor plants, thinking about kind of the cold season that we have. Um, sometimes we people grow plants in their house, and we're going to learn a little bit about that today. Um, so just to get us started here, um, on these series, we like to do the 4-H pledges. So if you want to do the pledge with me, I pledge my head to clear thinking, my heart to great loyalty, my hands to larger service and my health to better living for my family, my club, my community, my country, and my world. All right, thanks for joining in on that. And I just want to give you all some reminders too about online participation. Please remain muted until the presenter asks for questions. There'll be time for questions. So if you can stay muted, that kind of helps with um, us trying to answer those questions. So make sure you can stay muted and we'll tell you when to unmute. So be ready for that. Uh, use the chat for questions or answering any questions. So if you have a great question, throw it in the chat. Uh, we've got Becca and Nick, they're on there today, kind of watching and checking out the chat. Um, you'll, if you are one of those who would like to put some things in the chat, we're gonna give you a couple of reminders. And if you keep doing that, we're just gonna remove you from the webinar. We wanna make sure that our chats are clean and they're there for um, questions and uh, answers. And then uh, there will be times that we'll have you turn your cameras on so you can participate. Plus it's great to see all of you as well. It's not very fun just to see a black box. So it's, I like to see people's faces and what you're doing there. So um, that's just some online reminders. And with that, I am going to introduce, um, we have a special, we have a couple of special guests on today. Our first special guest is one of our uh, 4-H agriculture ambassadors, and her name is Sarah Waltz, and I'm going to have Sarah give us a little welcome. So Sarah, I'll turn it over to you. Hey, everybody. So like Brian said, uh, my name is Sarah Waltz, and I am a state 4-H agriculture ambassador. I am from Wright County, 
and my hometown club is the Monticello Monarchs 4 H Club. I'm really excited to get to be here with you all today and to learn with you guys about crops. So I've seen throughout my life how many opportunities for experience that 4 H has provided me. I throughout my life joined a project bull team. I've explored countless project areas with workshops, webinars, exhibiting at the fair. And now I get to sit with you guys here today as a state ambassador. So as you may know, 4-H's history is really rooted in agriculture. You know, from growing crops to raising livestock, 4-H provides opportunities like this for youth to experience and learn about agriculture. Um, I get to see this every year in my own county. One of my favorite things is a thing called Project Workshop Day, where kind of similar to this, but with an entire day full of webinars and learning, um, and it's incredibly helpful to learn and explore, just like what you guys get to do here today. And, you know, 4-H, they provide these opportunities for youth, especially with the agricultural focus that help you develop leadership and learn and grow these other lifelong skills. Now, as you guys know, you have a really great connection through 4-H to the University of Minnesota. And with that, we have some really great extension educators and information that's available to you that's really valuable in learning. So with that, I'm really grateful to join you guys today to learn and sit in on this. And I wish you guys all the best. I know you've got a couple months left of these um, webinars, so enjoy them and have a good time learning today. Thanks, Sarah. It's great to have you with us this afternoon. And um, great to hear you a little bit about your background. And if anyone's interested in being a state ambassador, uh, Sarah's been in our first year of this, this program. And so um, as you think about 4-H and if you're in that 10th or 11th, 12th grade, um, the applications are open right now. So you can apply to be um, an agriculture ambassador. So thanks again, Sarah, and, and welcome. All right, I have the first activity. And if some of you saw on the maybe the invite it asked to have a head of lettuce. If you don't have a head of lettuce, you're okay, but if you've got one or something like that, um, some romaine lettuce, a head of lettuce, um, I see some in the camera there, great. I am gonna turn my camera from myself down to my head of lettuce. So you're not gonna see me, but you're gonna see uh, my head of lettuce. And so give me a second here. We're gonna go right to my, my um, next special guest here, it's my head of lettuce. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna cut out the bottom of the lettuce so you can grow your own lettuce indoors this winter as we're all experiencing um, winterness in Minnesota. And I want you to do this safely. So if you have your, your lettuce like this, or I see some romaine lettuce there, that's great. We're gonna be using the bottom part. So this, this bottom part of your lettuce um, I should show you the whole, this is the top, but we're going to be working from the bottom this time. All right. Um, so if you've got um, an adult there to help you with a knife or a sharp object, that's great. If you don't, then just watch carefully with me and you can have an adult there with you next time you do this. Um, if you've got a head of lettuce like I do um, in my bowl here, you can take your knife and simply cut around Cut around the bottom, okay? So kind of cut in a circle. And then you can take your knife and just cut through and pop it off. Now, if you've got the romaine lettuce, you can just do a little chop just so you have that butt end. We're looking for this, this the bottom end, I should say, that we're gonna use to, to plant. So I'll give you a few minutes to get those cut and it should look like, I'll remove the whole head here. And it should look like this, where you've got your bottom of your, your lettuce. So I'll give you a little moment. Yep, I see some of those. Ben and Ella, great. Thank you for holding that up in your camera. That's why I like to see everybody because I can see where you're at. If you don't have lettuce, that's fine. Just watch with us and you can do this on your own. Once you get that cut, thank you, Sarah. I see you've got yours holding up. If you wanna hold up your lettuce bottom so I can see if you're all ready. Britta, Ava, and Ezra, and Lily, great. For those who've got cameras on, seeing all sorts of the ends, the McLeod group there, see, see them there. Chase, looks good. 
All right, if I hope I didn't miss anybody else. Everybody's proud of their bottoms of their, their lettuce there. All right, now you'll take some sort of container, a dish like this, it could be glass, it could be plastic. All right, I see Britta, so got one of those about her hand. And you're gonna take your lettuce and the, the butt end that was on the outside is gonna go down. Okay, so it'll go down into the water. And you can take some toothpicks and I'm just gonna use three just because I'm kind of stingy that way. I like to use my toothpicks after eating ribs and that kind of thing. So we're gonna take three toothpicks and you're gonna stab them into, and it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just gonna hold your lettuce out of the water a little bit, okay? So it'll kind of look like this. Maybe yours is better than that. I just stuck them in there again, because what we want to do is to have it holding the lettuce out of the water as much as possible. We don't wanna submerge the whole thing in there, okay? So it's gonna look like this. And I'll give you some time to get that part done. The fun part about this plant, yes, I see Britta's got hers up there with water in it already. You're gonna be able to start getting your own fresh lettuce off of this plant here in a couple of weeks. And in just a bit, once I see some other people have theirs ready, I'm gonna show you, I've been growing mine for about a week here. And I, I'm going to show you what I have so far on my plant once I see everybody's about ready. If I'm going too fast, you just have to put it in the chat or wave your hands up and down that I need to slow down a little bit. Oh, I see Ben and Ella have got theirs ready to go. Great. I see the babblers got theirs in the camera. Thanks for showing those. Great. All right. So then after, once you get this done, you can put water in there and you should have water up to about the, the first oh, inch or half inch to inch or so on your lettuce. Um, it could be submerged that much. And make sure that you keep checking that daily because the lettuce will absorb the water um, and you will have to add more water daily. So um, what I would like you to do before I show you my plant is to, um, as you're growing your lettuce, log it. Let's make a journal and just see how long it takes for your lettuce to grow. And so you can either email me or the next time we have one of these, you can update me how long it actually took you to see lettuce growing from your um, lettuce bottom. And I want you to show you what mine is looking like. This is about a week's worth of growing. And so you have to be patient. I'll bring it up to the camera, but I am getting some, some leaf placements coming here that in a few days, I'm gonna be able to have my own fresh lettuce that I've been growing out of my little container here. Um, I cannot tell you that fast. All right, we'll be patient here, but this again, um, this is what you're gonna watch for. Now, one more suggestion. I would find if you have a self-facing window to put it in that windowsill. Um, I've got the best growing from the south side of our, our house. So if you have a self-facing window, put it in there. And I would almost take it out in the evenings because that cold air could hurt your growth as it's growing my sweet potato. I've lost a couple of my leaves because I've left that in overnight by that window and I think it's gotten too cold um, and it's killing my leaves. So I gotta remove it and bring it inside. Um, but if you can find a self-facing window on your house, I think that's gonna get you growing a little bit more faster with your lettuce. So try to, um, to journal that, watch your lettuce every day. You're gonna have to add water to it. So make sure you keep adding water. This one is just, oh, the other thing, if I can show this here, you'll also see roots starting to grow. I don't know if you can see the roots of my plant here. I've got kind of a bad plastic container, but you'll see um, your roots starting to grow out of your, um, your lettuce as well. So 
really document the growth of your lettuce. Watch for roots, watch for the leaf to grow, and then maybe how much water that you're ad, um, adding either every day or every other day to continue to get it to grow. Um, be patient, it's not gonna grow overnight. Uh, you're gonna probably in about five, six days, see, start to see something emerge um, in your lettuce bottom um, as, that, as it's absorbing the water and starting to grow. So with that, um, I'm gonna turn it over to our next special guest. We've got all sorts of special guests today from Sarah Welts, our uh, 4-H Agriculture Ambassador, my head of lettuce. And now we've got Lori Rugg, a master gardener with us, who's gonna give us some more information about indoor plants. So Lori, I'm I gonna have... turn it over to you. Thanks, Brian. It's been really fun to see your lettuce. I've done that same thing with romaine lettuce and I loved it. It tastes just fresh and awesome. As Brian said, I'm a master gardener. I'm the master gardener coordinator here in Steele County. I live in Owatonna. So I like to do all things plants. And since I can't garden outside anymore because it's now cold, I turn to my indoor plants and I have quite a few of them in my house. But today I'm just gonna give you a few tips on successful ways to keep your house plants looking good. Hope you all help mom take care of your plants or dad, whoever in your household likes plants. And I'm gonna show you some little tricks and tips on how to transplant a plant too. So who doesn't like to get their hands dirty in dirt? I do, that's one of my favorite things in the whole wide world. So um, this is gonna be fun for me this afternoon. So first of all, I'd like to just say, when you're thinking about getting plants for home, you wanna make sure that you're thinking that you have the right plant for the right place in your home. Think about where are you gonna put it in your house? Is it gonna be near a sunny window? Is it gonna be near a window that's got a shade or a curtain on it? So every plant has kind of different light requirements. There are certain plants that do low light, medium light and high light. And for instance, if I say plant names that you guys aren't familiar with, I've got some of them here sitting on the table with me. So hopefully I can show a few of them to you so you can at least kind of see what kind of plants they are. So if we're talking about a low light plant, I have a peace lily and peace lilies look like this. They're just kind of a plain green leaf. They don't really have anything special going on about them. They do bloom once in a while. It's one of the few house plants that do bloom, but they are very, very low light plant. Medium light plant, I would have to say an arbicola, a chefalera, and I have a big one of those that I couldn't bring to share with you, but you just have to read on the little tags when you're buying plants, what kind of light requirements they have. Highlight plants tend to be ones that are variegated, have a variegated leaf, be it green and white or green and yellow, or like this just seen. This is a Dracaena marginata. And then I don't know if you can tell it really well, but this has got some pink and some kind of beige on the leaves in addition to the green. So he really needs more of a highlight to keep him happy. And we wanna keep the plants happy. So we wanna think about just exactly where you're gonna put them. Oh, I see a nice plant, Genevieve. Cool, I love plants. Um, so the other thing when you get them home, first of all, you gotta think about the light. Then you gotta think about, am I gonna water this plant? And how much am I gonna water this plant? Probably the most common thing people make mistakes with house plants is they love them to death. They water them way too much. So the best way to tell whether your plant needs a drink is use your finger, stick it inside the soil, about an inch down, and if the soil feels dry, then you think, hmm, I think I better water my plant. Most plants, especially this time of year, don't really need a whole lot of water. I always figure if I can maintain my plants in the winter time, that's what I need to do because we all know it gets dark later in the morning and it gets dark earlier in the afternoon. So we don't have those lot of daylight hours like we do in the summer or in the springtime. So plants kind of just take a little chill this time of year. So if you can just maintain them and keep them looking good, that's what you wanna do. So today I have a plant that I think needs to be transplanted. And why do I think that? Because I'm having to water it a lot. It's in a little, little four inch plot. This is an apostles family. It's called an enjoy plant. So what you wanna do, it's in a little four inch plant, like I said, pot. So you next, then you have to decide what kind of a pot am I gonna put it into? And the general rule of thumb when you're transplanting plants is you wanna go an inch to two inches larger in circumference, which means around of a pot to transplant it in. Cause you don't wanna put this tiny little plant in this huge, huge pot because it's gonna to try to grow all a bunch of roots and it's not gonna really do very well. So this is a four inch plant. 
So I'm going to put it in. I have a five inch pot right here. And the other thing you want to think about your pots, this one does have drainage and I don't think you'll be able to see it, but it's got a drainage hole in the bottom and then it's got a built in little saucer here. So this is a perfect way to transplant your plants. This will keep it the happiest. I also like to add a little bit of broken pieces of clay pot in the bottom of my pot, just for a little extra drainage in case you decide you want to love this plant to death. We don't want it to die. So in order to get this little plant out of your little container, Sometimes you have to kind of wiggle it around a little bit so that it all comes out kind of with your root ball intact. And so when you pull this out, that's what you're left with. And I've got a lot of little roots hanging down here. I don't know if you guys can see them or not, but it needs a new home. It needs more soil. There's a lot of roots. There's not a lot of soil left here. So we have to put this guy in a new pot. So I just use regular potting soil. Um, I took a class a month or so ago and the lady talked about, you might see or have heard of the moisture control soil that's on the market. That's not a good thing to buy for your plants because those little hydrogels in there don't really like to release the water that they hold into your plants. So you might think that the soil is really wet when you use your finger to stick it in but it's not able to release the water to your plant roots. So you wanna not buy the moisture control potting soil. It's a little bit more expensive. So you're gonna save mom and dad some money. You just want basic old plain miracle Grow potting soil. And then when you start to transplant your plant, you just wanna put the drainage pieces in the bottom. And then I've just started to add a little bit of soil around, just kind of filling it in. You wanna keep the soil level where it was in your other container about the same height in your new container. You don't wanna sink it way down inside or you don't wanna pull it way up high either. You wanna keep your soil level about with where the new soil level is going to go in that pot. And you just keep filling it in with soil. And I always use my fingers to kind of push it down and tap it down a little bit to make sure that there's no air pockets in there. Give it a little bit of water and it will be much, much happier. The other way you can tell if it's time to transplant a plant is if you're having to water it a lot. Like I've got a little Diefenbachia here the same way and I pulled him out of his pot and he's got a lot of roots and they're kind of circling around the bottom of the pot and that's not a good thing. So you want to kind of loosen those roots a little bit with your fingers. It's not going to hurt anything. It's not going to start crying or screaming at you. So you just want to loosen it up a little bit when you put that down in your new pot. And he'll be very happy again because I'm having to water him quite a bit. And he's a variegated plant, so he needs a little bit higher light. So I have him sitting right in my window. Give him a little bit of extra. The other thing that houseplants do for you is they clean your air. They make your air in your home much healthier. It takes out the bad stuff and gives you the good stuff. So some of those plants that really do all those kind of goodies are the Dracaena that I showed you before. This is a really good one. The peace lily that I showed you before. This is also one that most people will probably have at their home, but this one will help you clean your air also. And then I have a pothos plant like this, guys. And a lot of people have these. These guys clean your air also. And the other one that I pulled is a snake plant or a Sansevieria. I don't know if any guys have plants like this in your house, but I have quite a few plants in my home. So this one is another really good low light, very low maintenance plant. And you might ask, how did I ever learn so much about plants? Well, I've worked in greenhouses. I take classes on house plants, trial and error. A lot of times I'll go to a place and I think, oh, I really have to have that plant. So I bring it home. I've had successes and I've had some failures. I've killed a few plants along the way, but that's how you learn. So never be afraid to take a plant home that you've never seen or never tried before. Because when it does grow, it's like, wow, I made it work. So just keep that in mind. And if that's about all I, good news I have to share with you today, um, any questions from anybody or anybody have a, a problem with the plant that I could answer for you? Does maybe everybody as, like house plants? Lori, maybe as we're waiting for those questions to come in, can mm -hmm. you give them any ideas of what they can bring to the fair for indoor gardening? Um, and Absolutely. so you've given some plants there, yep. any suggestions for indoor gardening plants for the fair? 
Yep, absolutely. I judge at the state fair and I've also judged a lot of county fairs. And one good thing that you can keep in mind that you can bring to the fair is you can bring just one specimen plant, just a single plant, but you wanna make sure that you do a little booklet or a little information sheet along with it, telling me what kind of plant it is, maybe the scientific name, how you care for it, how long you've had it and that kind of stuff. So that's one option you can do. Another is I've seen a lot of dish gardens, we call them, or European gardens with a variety of smaller plants in one container. And you can also bring that too. But the important thing to keep then in mind also is make sure your plants are labeled. I think most horticulture judges like to see the names of plants when kids bring them. And you might not be able to pronounce them, and I don't care about that, but if you write it on a little index card and bring it with you to your judging session, that's what we like to see, because chances are you're going to remember that a little bit. So that's another thing you can do. Um, people bring cut flowers to the fair. I've seen a lot of succulent gardens. They're really popular right now, so we have a lot of kids will bring a succulent garden. And there again, just make sure that you name the kinds of succulents that you have in your garden. So those are some great ideas for that I've seen at County and State Fair. Lori, we're getting some questions here. So Genevieve, do you want to ask your question? Just have to unmute. Okay. Um, do you know what this plant is called? It keeps losing its leaves. Not all. Have you had it for a long time? No. Yeah. No. Well, no, not exactly. Not exactly. Um, it looks like it's an ivy plant to me. Does it kind of trail down a little bit? Nope, it stands straight up. Stands straight up. Hmm, it's got variegated leaves. Is that right? Yes. Hmm, how much light are you giving it? That would be my first clue. If it's losing a lot of leaves, give it a little bit more light, perhaps. We just moved it to a window. Great. Okay. Success. I would, especially this time of year, that's what that why most plants drop leaves is because they're not getting enough light. So that would be my first option for you to do. Move it to that window where it gets a little bit more light and see if you have a little bit more success. Okay. Thank and you. I can't really tell by the by what it is by looking at it. Sorry, I don't have a good enough picture of it. Otherwise, I could sure help you try to decide. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Lori. You're welcome. Giselle, look like you had a question. Do you want to unmute? So our, we have a string of bananas and it keeps dying at the top, at the top. Do you know how we would keep that alive? You have what kind of plant again? A string, string of bananas. bananas. Oh, a string of bananas. Ooh, those are really cool plants. Um, they are probably a little bit more of a tropical plant. Um, there again, probably it's liking humidity. It likes to live in Florida or somewhere where it's really warm all the time. So give it as much light in your house as you can. Um, if it looks like it needs a little bit extra humidity, another trick that you can use to give your plants more humidity is to like get a clear plastic saucer that's a little bit bigger than the pot that your plant is in. Put some pebbles in it and fill it with a little bit of water you know, like this little, just a little bit of water and then set your plant down on top of those pebbles. And that kind of creates a little more of a humid environment for your plants. And most house plants really, really like that. So I think I maybe would try more light and maybe even a little bit of a humidity tray and that maybe will help you out a little bit. And Chase had in the, in the chat, do you have hostas? Yes, I do. <laughs> I have lots of them in my yard. Yes, I do. Gabriella. You have to cut them off away every year. Do I have to what? Cut them off? Cut them. So if, you, if you were to look in my yard right now, I don't cut my plants back in the fall. I'm one of those perennial gardeners that likes to leave the leaves and the stems and the stalks for the insects to have a place to hide for the winter. And so I just let everything kind of collapse down. I don't have any snow on the ground here where I live, but they're all just kind of collapsed right on down. And then in the springtime, when I'm getting ready to clean all my perennial beds off, then it's a lot easier for me to go out and just kind of clean up the dead leaves at that time. So that's how I take care of my hostas. Gabriella, you had a question. Uh, 
Um, I have a plant that um, I got from a garden thingy. It was a um, kind of like a show thing that you can buy plants, but it was on a free table that w- needed help. Okay. And mm-hmm. it got knocked down. Uh-oh. It was, um, it was a, uh, succulent. I don't know what it was. Mm-hmm. Um, and we repotted it, um, with rocks in the bottom. Perfect. Of the pot. And it was about two or three inches long. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, Will plants about that size survive a repotting? Absolutely, they do. Absolutely. Succulents, you know, they're one thing you want to make sure that you don't overwater succulents because they don't really like that. But yeah, in succulents, the other thing when you're transplanting succulents that I always find, they don't really have as much of a root system as some of the couple of plants that I showed you. They have very shallow or tinier root systems. So you have to be a little bit careful to make sure that they stay upright in your plant, in your planter or your container and not sink them down too far into the soil. But no, they certainly should survive just fine. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Someone's showing a Christmas cactus Christmas there. cactus, and it's blooming. Yay. Those are fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've got a question here in the chat, Lori. Our peace lily leaves are turning yellow, then brown on the edge of the leaves. What's going on? Um, could be a couple of things. The brown on the end is humidity because they like we talked about earlier, they like to be in Florida, they like to be in the humidity. So that's probably because we have forced hot air furnaces in the winter time. I would move it away from a heat vent or a heat duct if you have it near that, because that will tend to dry your plant out. Yellowing leaves, if the leaves are kind of in the center or down around the bottom, that means that the top leaves are shielding off the sunlight that that plant is getting and they're dying off underneath. So you wanna pick that plant if it's sitting on the floor, pick it up so it's closer to the window sill or closer to the window because that's why the lower leaves are turning yellow. They're not getting enough sunlight. So try that, pick it up off the floor, put it on a little table or try to give it a little more light. Okay, Britta, you had a question? Um, yeah, my question was, do you have any good ways to get rid of aphids because my lemon tree and also when do lemon trees usually start to have lemons because I have a little Meyer lemon tree, Mm -hmm. or maybe the dwarf Meyer lemon tree, but some kind of Meyer lemon, and it has lots and lots of aphids on it and we've tried sticky aphid traps, but I haven't noticed many aphids on them, and I got it like, Mama, when did I get my lemon tree? After my birthday last March, like last year, but it still hasn't had any lemons. Okay. Aphids are kind of a tricky houseplant pest to get rid of. Um, I don't like to use a lot of chemicals on my houseplants. I try to do other things that are not so chemically. So I use Safer's insecticidal soap on my plants. It's something that you can buy like at a garden center or at a Lowe's or someplace like that that would have a little bit of of chemicals. And it's a spray that you spray on. The other thing, depending on exactly how big your little tree is, if you wanna spray it down and put it, like cover it with plastic for a day or two to kind of help um, your plant and the aphids kind of absorb all that chemical, that's what I would try. Um, The other thing, if you can move it to the sink, I would take it to your kitchen sink and spray it with water. That will help knock some of the aphids off as well. There's a third thing that you can do is use a systemic insecticide and put that into the soil. It's like a granular that you can mix into the soil. And then every time you water it, that insecticide will go in through the plant roots and go up into the plant and help kill those aphids. So there's a couple different things that you could do. Okay, good luck. And as far as it blooming, um, I've never had a lemon tree. So honestly, I don't know. Probably it's not old enough yet would be my guess. Um, So just kind of, we have to be a little patient. So try that. Okay, I know patience is hard. Got it. Thanks. Okay. 
we got one more question just to, as far as time here. We've got one more I'm going to ask. Anne, you said you're wondering something. Hopefully it's around plants or uh, what we're talking about today. So I was just, I was just wondering about cactuses. Mm -hmm. Um. So, so um, what, what conditions do they really need? Because my mom is allergic to like the soil, to the mold, and my my family's allergic to mold. So okay, so you don't want anything that's gonna mold, right? Yeah, and like cactus, the soil. Keep, yep. Cactus, you keep pretty dry, so you shouldn't have to really water them at all. You know, depending on the variety of cactus, there's a difference between cactus and succulents. If you remember, succulents don't have prickers, cactus have prickers. So whenever you're looking for a cactus, make sure that it has spines or prickers, I call them. Um, so that's really more into the cactus family. Those you keep a little bit or a lot more dry. You don't use a sandier soil. You don't really water them a lot. So that would be the difference. And I, if your family has troubles with mold, then that could be a plant that you could probably grow. Okay. All right. I'm going to take one more question here before our time is done. Uh, Gabriella, you had one more question. Um, um, from that same plant show thingy, mm -hmm. um, I got, um, I got a, someone gave me a big pot of succulents cool. and most of them are dying and I don't know how we should, we have them in, um, in a, in our plant room, which is a, there's windows on almost all the sides. Cool. Yeah. And um, it's in a good sized bowl for the plants. And I don't know what we should do with it. I don't, we haven't, I don't know what it's planted in though. Okay. Are they bigger succulents? Um, they're about the same size as the thing I was telling you about earlier. It could be that, you know, are there a lot of them in one thing? It could be that it's in too big of a container for the little plants. Um, if you're finding that they're really demising, you might want to move them out of that container into little pots just so that they can get themselves established without seeing the kind of size of a container that it is. Sometimes if they're in too big of a container, they don't like that. So, you know, try that. Okay. Okay. Good luck. Thanks. All right. Well, thank you all. Thank you, Lori, for that great bunch of information you provided us this afternoon. That just that was awesome. Uh, thank you, Sarah, for joining us and, and uh, talking a little bit about the Ag Ambassador Program. Thank you all for joining. Um, keep track of how your plants, your, your lettuce is growing, because next time we meet, I want to see some lettuce or hear how it's been growing for you all. Um, for those of you, if this is your first time with us, we will be sending challenges now um, next week. So there'll be three challenges, one a week that we'll send via email. We have all your emails and um, you'll get those and hopefully that you'll complete the challenges. If you uh, are doing one of those, take a picture of yourself or let us know via email how it went for you. It's always great to uh, hear some of that feedback. So.